evening, anybody who's here already. We will be getting started in a minute or two. We are almost ready. All right, a little guitar this evening. ready. All right, looks like it's seven o'clock. Well, good evening, everybody that's here. Welcome. And thank you so much for being here. I'm very excited. Um, my name is Kevin Fleming. I'm a teacher here at TakeLessons.com, and welcome to this Take Lessons TV uh, beginner guitar class. I really appreciate you being here. It's awesome. I'm very excited, and uh, we're going to get right into it. Let me just give you a quick background on me, because I'm sure most of you probably don't know me. I'm 43 years old. I live in the state of Georgia, if you can't tell by the hat. I, um, I've been playing music, specifically guitar, I've been playing for over 30 years, since I was about 12. Um, I've been teaching music for over 20 years. I've earned bachelor's and master's degrees in classical guitar performance. I have been an assistant professor of music at a couple of colleges, and I currently teach um, at the University of Georgia, here in Georgia, go dogs. And um, I have won several awards, but I'm not gonna bore you with that. At some point you can take a look at my profile if you'd like, but I would rather get straight to the guitar. So uh, let's get to it. So once again, like I said, this, for those of y'all that are just chiming in or have been waiting uh, patiently, I appreciate it. This is a beginner guitar class. So this is in fact a class where we're literally starting from scratch. Um, and so I'm gonna get you started. I'm gonna basically teach you everything you need to know, materials and else to get started playing guitar. So let's jump right into it. As you can see, let me start you off by showing you the beautiful acts that I'm playing this evening. Let's see if I can get it all in the camera. This is a nylon string classical style guitar, right? It's that kind of thing. And, um, and so, sorry about that. Um, so basically you've probably seen the different styles of guitars, right? And I'm about to pull up a diagram for you, but before I do, just to talk about them, a nylon string guitar, of course, has nylon strings, which are like, fishing line. They're very spongy. They have a lot of give. They're made for finger picking. And like I told you before, that is my specialty because I did study classical guitar. But don't you worry, I've played in a million bands too. I play a lot of electric and acoustic. Uh, I, I do it all basically. So um, that's the, just wanted to tell you in case you've never seen a nylon string before, because it probably looks a little funny. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pull up my first slide so we can talk about the anatomy of a guitar. That's the place to start. So give me one second. I'm going to share my screen with you. All right. So let me zoom in just a little. All right, hopefully you can all see this. Um, ironically, this does not have an, a nylon string guitar like I'm holding, but that's okay. These are the two main types of guitars. As you can see on the left, you have an electric guitar, and on the right, you have an acoustic guitar. Now, anybody can look up diagrams of these, and that's fine. 
But if you have a guitar in your hand right now, and I hope you do, um, you want to make the connection about what is what on your guitar. Because if this is the beginning of your guitar adventure, you're going to want to right away at the beginning um, speak, you want to speak the same language as the rest of the guitar players, right? So you want to know how to name everything. So on your diagram, as you can see, I'll start from the top. We have three main parts, okay? We have the head, the neck, and the body. Now you may see a few terms in between there and we'll get to that. But the main three are the head, the neck, and the body. And you can see those three words all in the top half of this diagram. So uh, let me stop the share for one second so I could show you that. So now that I'm back, head, that's this piece, right? So we like to personify things when we name things as human beings, obviously. So we're naming it just like we would name our own body parts, head, the long parts, the neck, and then this is the body. So those are the main three parts, right? And then as you get into it, and I'll bring that diagram up again in the middle, over here on the end, you probably already know that these are tuners or tuning pegs. And we're most certainly going to talk about tuning before this class is over because that's very important. So for those of y'all who've never really messed with a guitar ever at all, you can see that we're going to be turning these left or right, depending on how high or low we need each string to go in order to sound right on a guitar. Because one thing I will tell you right now, um, people do get lazy about tuning and that is very bad for your ears as a musician in general, okay? I'll, I will warn you um, because if you're just picking up the guitar over and over again uh, without actually tuning it each time, then who knows how close it actually is to being in tune. And at that point, your ears are not able to get used to the real pitches. But tell you what, I'll come back to that when we come back to um, tuning, when I talk about tuning. Let's finish anatomy, it won't be long. So as you know, so we already talked about the head and the tuners. And as you know, they look a little bit different on an acoustic and an electric, as opposed to the nylon string. Um, then now we talked about this long part being the neck. And then you have the metal bars that are called frets. F-R-E-T-S, frets. And what do they do? They separate the pitches. So we're gonna learn how to play in a little bit, but to give you a demonstration, if I put my finger close to a fret, I get one sound. Now I can put my finger anywhere behind that fret and it's the same sound. As soon as I cross over a fret, it's a higher sound. So same thing when I cross another fret and another, and it gets higher and higher as we go on up, as you can hear. Um, so we'll talk uh, once again, more specifically about how to make those sounds properly here in a minute, but that's what those do, the frets. The frets divide the pitches. If you've played piano or keyboard, just think of the frets as each different key on the piano as you go up one by one. That's basically what it's doing. It's a way to think about it. Okay, we talked about the body. So as we finish up the body here, you obviously have a sound hole if you have an acoustic or classical like I do. If you have an electric, you will not have a sound hole but in their place, you have pickups. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull that diagram back up and show you what I mean. Here we go. All right, so as you can see here, see how they're comparing at the bottom here, um, the sound hole, and it only points to the acoustic, right? Because it's obvious that what that word means. And on the other one, you have what we call pickups. 
for electric. So if you're holding an electric guitar or you're planning on getting one, you can see that this particular electric on this diagram has three pickups. And they are those uh, horizontal looking things with the dots going across them in place of the sound hole. And they act like microphones for an electric guitar. So when you plug an electric guitar into an amplifier, those pickups are your microphones that are picking up the sound that you're picking and sending them in. All right, and so there's a couple other things that you can look at there. Um, you know, there's a pick guard for the acoustic. It makes it so that when you're strumming a lot, you don't, uh, you know, rub through the wood, if you will. We can replace a pick guard, but we can't replace the wood if we wear a hole through it. So we have pick guards and they can be replaced. And then, as you can see, one other term that you want to look at before I move on um, is the bridge. So it's the second to last word on this diagram, the bridge. And the bridge is the big piece on both of them that holds the strings into the body, right? And so with that tension, you're able to pull the strings and tune them to the right pitches. So as you can tell, there's a couple other terms there, but um, since I'm being fairly general today, I'm gonna go ahead and move on so that we can get to some playing. Okay, so once again, you learned, let's, let's just recap very quickly. Head, tuners or tuning pegs, neck, sometimes called the fretboard. I didn't bring that up before, but that makes sense. It's a fretboard because it has frets, right? and the frets divide the pitches. And then you have the body, and the body has a sound hole, or if you're playing an electric, it has pickups. Um, all of them are gonna have six strings and they're all tuned the same way. So it's not like they're vastly different instruments or anything, don't think that. And then the last thing I said is that we have a bridge, and you can tell it's a really long piece on my classical here, and the bridge is holding the strings into the body. Okay, so that's the uh, anatomy. And by the way, um, I meant to tell you this at the beginning. If you all have questions, I will do my best to get to them during the class. You can send them in the chat if you would like, um, and I will do my best to get them. It might not be immediately, but I will do my best. And I will also leave a few minutes, maybe five minutes at the end of the class um, to, to answer some questions as well, just so you know. Okay, all right, so before I pull up any other diagrams, um, I want to go ahead and, hold on, sorry, I'm going to maximize my screen, good, okay, so I want to go ahead and let's talk about your hands, how to use them, how to play, so one thing I'm going to pull out from down here is a pick, now I'm sure a lot of you right now are thinking, well, what all materials do I need, right, and I was going to write down a list, but I don't actually think you need to write anything down. I think it's pretty simple to remember. If you already have the instrument, that's the obvious one. Um, the next thing would be picks, right? So here's a pick I use. It's a little bit smaller than what people normally use. I'm sure most of y'all have seen guitar picks before, even if you've never touched one in your life, you know what they are. My suggestion for people, they ask, well, what's the difference in a bigger one, a smaller one, a thin one, a medium one? There are some differences. Um, the one, my one opinion as somebody who's been playing and teaching a long time is that you should stay completely away from the really thin picks, okay? And I have my reasoning, of course. The thin picks just have a real sort of slappy sound on the strings, okay? It's just not pleasant. It's one of those things where um, it kind of sounds like a playing card in a bicycle spoke. <laughs> if you've ever heard that before, that's kind of old school. Uh, that probably dates me. But um, if you know what I'm talking about, um, then uh, it's, not a, it's not a pleasant sound on the guitar. So my suggestion is get yourself a variety of picks, but start with some medium picks and then some thick picks. 
you know, they have picks that have grip on them, which is nice. You can try that or not. Um, you know, it's different strokes for different folks, right? That's the reason you have different stuff. So if you're just starting out, I always suggest people get a variety of stuff. Um, just stay away from the really, really flimsy picks. That's all I'm saying. Try all the others, find out what you like. Okay. Let's say you've got a pick in your hand right now. Okay. Now I'm going to show you, this seems like a really trivial thing, but I was actually doing a live lesson on this earlier from somebody who's been playing a while and they just didn't know. So I'm going to go over this, which is how do you hold your pick? As you can tell, I'm a right-handed guitarist. Um, and some of you may be lefties. So whichever one is your dominant hand, this is my right hand, is the one you're going to pick with. Um, but he, here, here's what you're going to do. It's real simple. I want you to take the big part of your pick. And I want you to put the point in the other hand like this. Just hold it like that. It's not the hand you're going to be using. Now, what you're going to do with the hand you're using is you're going to make a hook in your hand like that, okay? So it's kind of like a, a, like a C almost. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the flat part of your pick and lay it against the tip joint like so, and then cover it with your thumb like this. And now, the, ultimately, the result should be, and I'm dangling my other fingers, the result should be, Sorry, it slipped. The result should be that when my palm is facing the ground, my pick point is facing the ground. Once again, when my palm is facing the ground, the point of my pick is also facing the ground. Now, I want you to notice something else that I'm doing. I'm only holding it with thumb and index. Do not hold it with your middle finger as well. Some people are tempted to do this and they kind of just get in a bad habit of playing a pick like this. That is really bad. It's very cumbersome. It's very clumsy. Um, it's just not what you want to do. It's a lot more nimble and efficient to be able to just hold it right there in those tip joints. Um, so once again, you take the pick real quickly to put the flat part on the tip, cover it with the thumb, and, all, and then you can adjust accordingly, depending on how big your pick is, you can choke up on it, kind of like a baseball bat, if you know what I mean, like just kind of moving up higher on it, things like that. All right, that's it. It's that simple for picks. Um, okay, so now, how do you hold your left hand? These are things that I think I'm teaching today because I think a lot of people don't necessarily think about these in the beginning, but these are very important because everything you do depends on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to my side a little bit and I'm using my left hand, which is my fretting hand now, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it down to my side. You're not gonna be able to see all of it, but I promise you it's straight and my palm is facing that way. So face your palm, tell you what, I'm gonna face you and make this a little simpler. Face your palm exactly towards me at the camera. Now, what I want you to do is, I know you can't see my whole arm, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend at just the elbow, okay? Do not bend your wrist. Bend at the elbow, come straight up with your, now I'm gonna to turn to the side so I can show you what the fingers are doing. Thumb on the back, straight. See how my thumb is straight? Don't lay it down. Don't put it over the guitar. Lay it in the middle straight. And then the other fingers curled. Don't, it doesn't matter where you put them right now. It's arbitrary. All we're trying to do is set up where the hand goes. So now if you look at me square on, look at what my hand looks like. Now here's what I want you to notice. I am standing up right now um, where I'm filming from, but um, I do sit when I play, but it's really similar because I do have a strap on and that's why the guitar is so angled. I'll talk about that in a minute. But the main thing is to have a straight arm, a straight wrist, curled fingers, and a straight thumb. Now, let me, let me bring in some other no-nos. We talked about the thumb. Here's some no-nos. See what I'm doing with my wrist? Eh, that's very 
very, very bad. That's a recipe for tendonitis right there. Not trying to scare anybody, but uh, extra tension is very, very bad. So same thing with this, and that's wrong as well. So the idea that the wrist is bending this way or this way is just not good. Um, obviously with the way the muscles work, we want everything to be very relaxed and fluid in here. So when the wrist comes up with that C shape in the hand where the fingers are curled and the thumb is in the back, you want your wrist to be straight. So now let me talk about um, the other thing I was talking about, even though I am standing up right now, even when I'm sitting down, my guitar is still this angled, okay? In other words, sorry, I got a little too much in the camera there. <laughs> Um, so angle, notice that the neck is up at an angle. Let me show you what's bad. This is bad. Let me show you why, because when you start playing, oh, your wrist is going to have to overwork to play. So even the guitar being completely straight like this is actually still a little difficult to play correctly. So really the correct way to do it is to have a little bit of upright angle. And people might say, well, how much upright angle do you actually need? That, you know, honestly, I have a rule for people. Your, any one of your tuning pegs that I'm looking at at eye level is a good level. So if my tuning pegs are at about eye level, any one of them, which gives you some leeway, does that make sense? In other words, you doesn't have to be the one I'm looking at. It could be any of the six of them. You kind of just want to have one of them at about eye level. And if you can do that, you'll have the right angle for playing guitar. Okay? All right. Um, hang on one second while I transition. Anybody got any questions or anything in the chat? I don't see any yet. That's okay. I'll make time for them at the end. Uh, okay, so before I pull up another chart, which I'm going to in a minute. Um, so look, I do need to address tuning. I won't spend forever on it. Um, it's actually fairly simple. The main thing about tuning these days and the beauty of apps, right? We have apps on our phones, on our iPads and things like that, that can tune. And so I'm actually going to show you on my actual phone here, which app I use. This is an app called Guitar Tuna. Oh, sorry about that. It was Guitar Tuna. Guitar Tuna. And when I say tuna, it's spelled like tuna fish, if you can see that at the top there. Guitar Tuna, T-U-N-A. This is a free tuning app, okay? And it's beautiful. It's one of those that will try to get you to upgrade to some levels. You don't have to do that. I've never paid for it. It's a great app, though. You can also tune other instruments with it, like banjo and mandolin. Um, but as you can tell, it's picking up my voice. But basically, it's pretty self-explanatory after that. Because what I'll do is I'll play each string. Luckily, that was in tune. And you could tell. It's like a video game. It gives you a bing when you hit it. So that was my second string. And it's showing the second string. Right. So in other words, without going into too much detail with this, so we can move on to some playing. Um, this is very important and it's not very hard to do. You just have to practice it like anything else. OK, so in other words, now that you're if, if this is your first time ever playing an instrument, um, you know, uh, you're about to start uh, an entirely new discipline. OK. And when I say discipline, it's something that needs to happen daily and regularly. Um, but so tuning is, is, is pretty simple and you might say, which way do I go and that kind of stuff. That's pretty self-explanatory. You can start playing in here, whether it's going higher or lower, um, that kind of thing. So once again, uh, normally I would go into even more detail with tuning, but we just don't have the time. I need to move on to some other stuff. So the next thing I need to move on to is actually making sounds, right? I've done all this prep about what do you call all this and you know how do the what are the what are these the frets and they make sounds and there's tuning and all that kind of stuff um but now we want to play right so 
take your pick that you learned how to hold in your right hand. What I want you to do is I want you to put it on the first string. Now, when I say put it on, I mean put it above it. So in other words, I'm gonna pick the string down towards the floor. Sorry, sorry, I slipped because of the way that I am uh, standing right now. So I'm gonna pick towards the floor, just on the bottom string, okay? And like I said, let the other fingers dangle. They should feel like spaghetti noodles, very loose, no extra tension, right? So it's that simple. So now we're gonna put this hand with this hand. So if you remember the curvature that we talked about with the fingers on the left hand being curled, what I want you to do, I'm gonna show you kind of a close up here. You're gonna take your pointer finger, okay? And you're gonna put it right behind, let me show you from this angle, the first fret. That's the first fret, right? By the way, I didn't tell you this white piece is called the nut because it's less significant, but it's not a fret, just so you know. And that's why it looks different. So this is the first fret and I'm putting my finger, look which side I'm putting my finger on. Now this is important. Not everybody thinks about this. You wanna put your finger as close as possible to the fret without touching it. So let me repeat that. Your finger needs to be as close as possible to the fret without touching it. And you say without touching it, why? As soon as I touch it, I'm gonna get a muted sound because then the fret's not doing what it's supposed to do. The whole point of what the fret does is when I put my finger here, it cuts off this piece of string behind it, that tiny piece, and then the string gets shorter and the pitch gets higher. That's called the inverse string law of physics, if you've ever heard that one before. So the shorter the string gets, the higher the pitch gets, and vice versa. So when I go to a second fret, let's say I want to take my second finger now. By the way, I'm sorry, I, I didn't let you play that note, did I? Let's do it. So take your pointer finger, put it right behind the first fret. What you need to do is you need to press it in with the tip of the finger do not lay it flat. This is such a no-no, okay? Lay it on the tip. And when I say tip, I mean the pad, not the fingerprint. So like, for example, this is your fingerprint, right? This is the pad on the top. So you need to be on the tip, tip, top of your finger. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press it in. And then I'm gonna take my pick and I'll pluck towards the floor. And if so, try that. If for some reason you didn't get the sound that I got or it's not perfect or it sounds funny, there could be a few reasons. So now I'm gonna help you with troubleshooting with fretting, okay? So that we can do the other fingers and, and play some music. So the troubleshooting is this. Number one, you might not be pressing down hard enough. So people ask me all the time, my students ask me, well, how hard do I really need to press? You don't wanna like press so hard that you're like white knuckling. That's uh, another one of those things that causes too much tension. You do not wanna do that. And then you don't wanna be pressing so lightly that the, the note is muted like this. So here's what you can do. Start with the finger a little bit off the string or just kind of right above it. Start playing the string, should sound like this. And then what you're gonna do is start slowly pressing down. There it is. So I started slowly applying pressure. As soon as I heard a clear sound, don't press any harder. If you press any harder than that, it's, it's just extra, it's extraneous, you just don't need it. And so therefore you're causing extra tension. So that's something that you wanna try is get used to how much pressure do I actually need to put on the guitar when I wanna make a good sound. Okay, moving on then, let's try the next finger now. So I haven't numbered all your fingers yet, right? And if you play another instrument like piano, for example, you know that we always number the fingers. 
So in the case, I'm just going to just do left hand, or in my case, fretting hand. If you are a left-handed person, then your fretting hand will be your right hand, not to be confusing. But whatever hand is your fretting hand is the one that I'm going to name right now. Thumb doesn't count because thumb's on the back. But your other fingers go one, two, three, four. So if you can remember, index is one, pinky is four. It's that simple. So now what we're gonna do, we already used our first finger. Now we're gonna use our second finger, our middle finger, to play the note on the second fret of the first string, okay? So you already played this note right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my middle finger and I'm gonna come, remember, as close as possible to the fret without touching it. Round, I'll show you from the side. Round on the tip. Take the pick and pluck towards the floor. Give that a try. And look, as night follows day, you're gonna do your ring finger behind the third fret. And then you're gonna try your pinky, which pinky is always difficult for everyone. If you struggle with pinky, it's not because it's not your pinky. It's everybody's pinky. Pinky is just kind of a pain when learning a fretted instrument like the guitar. We have to work really hard on it. More on that later, probably. So the first exercise you can do this week, just to get used to playing after you set up all the stuff that we, we talked about. Don't forget about the way the hands should sit, the way the pick should sit, the form on which the fingers go on the guitar the angle, the tuning, you need to get in the habit of tuning every time you pick up the guitar. Okay, seriously. Um, and then you can try this exercise. So your first exercise is basically just going in order on each string. So then I'll go to the next string. Right, and I'm just going in order from frets one, two, three, and four on every string. That's really, really good for you. Um, you know, in order to break, if, if you haven't played guitar at all or just not much, or you've been out of it for a long time, you're gonna have to build calluses, right? I'm sure all of you have heard of calluses. Mine aren't quite as built up as they normally are right now, just because I'm doing a lot of other work, but normally mine are really, really calloused. Um, because I, one thing I didn't tell you earlier is that I actually play several instruments. I play banjo, mandolin, ukulele, lap steel, and piano as well. So my fingers are usually pretty, pretty leathery, if you will. That's kind of what a callus gets to be at the end. But look, don't worry about that. One thing I'll, 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 you'll want to get used to right away is that your fingers are going to get sensitive and have some pain, especially if you're playing a steel string acoustic. Steel string acoustic, there's no way around it. It's the hardest uh, weapon to wield, if you will. In other words, notice I'm, I'm cheating on a nylon string because when I teach, like I'm doing now, and like I've, I've been doing all day today, um, I like to keep, I don't want to wear my hands out so bad just teaching so that I can't do other playing. Um, and so I, I cheat and use nylon strings because they're easier. So if you haven't bought a guitar yet or you're thinking about what you're going to get, I probably didn't mention this earlier, but nylon strings are the easiest on the hands, okay? Um, they're just very spongy and easy to push in. Steel strings are going to be a lot more difficult and you're going to get a lot more finger pain. It's normal though. In other words, it's, it's not forever. It's one of those things where if you start playing every day, you'll probably have sensitivity for a month or two, depending. It just depends on how much you actually play. Um, and, you know, and, you know, people's, people's body chemistry is different and things like that. So it, it depends on the individual, but, um, but just know that that's normal. Okay, so you got your first exercise on how to fret. Now we need to get to something very important. Uh, it doesn't look like I have any questions.
question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up. All right. Give me one second. I appreciate your patience. Okay. So now we're going to talk about a concept called guitar tablature. Now, this is the part that might start scaring some people. <laughs> I, I fully understand that. Um, and, you know, this is, a, so for those of y'all who have no idea what tablature is or just never read it before, um, tablature is a notation where you are basically looking at the neck of a guitar through a diagram and putting numbers, as you can see all the numbers on there, they represent frets. So remember, we were putting our fingers on different frets and the numbers represent that. And look, this you don't have to read what's on here, okay? It's just an example. It's actually harder than a, than a beginning level. They're just showing you. Um, and so as you can tell, you have six lines going left to right, right? And those represent your strings. And then the numbers that you see represent your frets. And then what we do is we're going to figure out the left hand fingers in a little bit. So actually, I've got another something I'm going to pull up real quick. Hang on one moment. Um, yeah, actually, this is better. Okay, so check this out. All right, so this is another reading tabs thing. Don't worry about all the numbers. You don't have to do all that yet. Don't get intimidated. Look how the guitar looks upside down here. So look at the, read the top of the page. Guitar tabs are read as though you're looking down at your guitar while playing. It seems bizarre. I know it does. It's just something to get used to. Um, blame it on the guitar. So in other words, when you're looking at this, once again, look at the sort of the perforated lines there on the diagram. Those represent your strings. And I didn't go over all the letters of the strings. Once again, it was just a time thing for today. Um, but your, each one of those lines left represents one of your strings on your guitar and the numbers represent the frets you would play on. Um, and so that, that's something you're gonna wanna get used to um and so i had something else pulled up for you and i guess i'm gonna have to look for it but that's okay so uh, look remember um just remember so to remind you just remember how I'm, I'm how important i'm making all of this stuff as far as like what your hands do what your fingers do all that kind of stuff the technique because people people don't really want to think about that because they just want to dive into playing. But the problem is, is you can create a lot of bad habits. So it's stuff you really want to think about for a while. Uh, sorry, I thought I had this pulled up. My apologies, y'all. Uh, I'll just go with what I could find here. No, one second. Catch a breather for a second. <laughs> Let's see. I'm almost there. For some reason, I had something pulled up in my browser and for some reason it closed. Okay, I found it. All right, so now I'm, I'm gonna share another screen and we're gonna learn a song together. And that is what I would like to do. Sorry, I'm just having trouble pulling it up here. Okay, does everybody see this? I hope you see this. Uh, let me know, Maria, if for some reason, I'm not sure if this is working or not. Um, hopefully you can see this. Um, this is a tune called Ode to Joy. And you, I'm sure all of you heard it before. It's an old Beethoven tune, right? It's that kind of thing. Um, so first of all, it sounds like this.
There we go. I'm sure you've all recognized that. Um, and once again, I hope you can see what I'm showing on my screen. I think it's sharing, right? Um, so if you can, hopefully look here at what you see, right? You can see the tab. Um, and that's what I was talking about before. So this is what you want to start on as a beginning guitar player. So if you take a look at the very top line, notice each line is a set of your six horizontal lines, each one representing a string, and the numbers represent the frets. So to get you started, um, the very first note is, if you look at the very top of the page under the word intro on my screen here, um there's a zero right oops i'm sorry there's a zero for some reason it's doing that there's a zero there and it's on the first string oh i think i think the ads are popping around on it so sorry about that i apologize didn't realize that was going to happen let's click this one off um so as you can see below the word intro you can see the number zero and it's on the first string. Now, I didn't necessarily talk about all the strings. Um, the strings, uh, the top line is going to be your bottom string. So remember that diagram I showed you a while ago that looked upside down? Yep, that's what I'm referring to. So your your the zero there, which by the way, those are fret numbers. So zero means you don't put a finger on the fret at all, right? If it's a zero, it's what we call an open string. So you play the open string, okay? So in other words, I'm gonna take the first string and play it like this. I'll go back to my camera in a minute and show you. I just wanted you to be able to see this. So if you take the first, let's just take the first four numbers. Otherwise we're gonna run out of time. Anyway, I'm taking the first four numbers, which is zero, zero, one, three. So remember that for the purposes of what we're doing here. Oh, here I am, I'm back. Um, so zero, zero, one, three, right? first string is going to be the one on the bottom, the one closest to the floor. So even though that was the highest line in the tab, that's the one we're playing. So zero is going to be without a finger on it. Two zeros in a row, right? See that? Now, notice when I play a zero, notice what I didn't do. You're like, oh, I don't need my hand, you know, why, why have it up there? Well, you're going to kind of need it for other stuff. So I'm, I'm joking, but not really, because the thing is, you're going to want to keep the hand in the right position all the time, right? So I'm going to play zero, zero. Then I'm going to put my first finger behind that first fret. Remember, as close as possible and then three. So when I play those four notes in a row, it should sound like this. And then the song keeps going for time's sake. I'm not gonna be able to go over it all, but. And it keeps going. It, 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 you already heard me play it, but the idea is that you can take your knowledge of tablature which is the strings and your knowledge of how frets work, which is the numbers. And you can put the two together and just kind of in a diagram and play any songs you want. Here's the thing about that. The reason I teach tabs over note reading, note reading is very tedious and cumbersome. I do it all the time, okay? I am a professional, but tab is quick and easy and free, which is nice, right? And so it's all over the internet. You can search guitar tabs everywhere. It's a great way to start learning tunes. Now, this always happens to me. Um, I'm about to run out of time for this class and I wanna make sure I can answer any questions. 
Um, but let me start by saying, first of all, thank you so much for your time for being here. I really appreciate it. This is a lot of fun. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and got a lot out of it. Um, if you look in the chat box on your Zoom screen, there will be a link to my teaching profile on Take Lessons. If you just look in the chat box um, at the top of it, there is a link to my profile um come study with me let's have some fun playing some guitar i would really really like to have any and all of you come on and learn some guitar with me through take lessons it would be a lot of fun um i do also teach other instruments like i said so if any of y'all want to or know um anybody that wants to also learn banjo mandolin or ukulele especially i also teach those three but um Please, please come study with me. I have a lot of different availabilities uh, during the week and um, we could have a lot of fun doing it. So look, I'm about out of time here at 745 Eastern time where I am. Um, but um, I do want to open it up for any questions in the chat area. Is there anybody that has been listening to this class that has a question that would like to type it into the chat box? Anybody at all? Nobody? I don't see anything yet. Um, okay, well, I'll, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay here for about one more minute. Um, see if anybody else has some questions. Um, but uh, once again, I really appreciate y'all being here. This was a lot of fun. Um, I appreciate your time. And look, if, if you're looking to study with guitar, um, I'm a guy that's really, really passionate about the education of music and guitar. And uh, so let's have some fun and do it. Uh, I can help you get to your goals to, to having some fun playing your, some guitar. Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay, I got a question. Here we go. The question is, is playing an electrical guitar the same as a classical guitar? Good question. It's not exactly the same. What I will tell you about it that is the same is that um, it's the same six strings. They're tuned in the same way. You pick them the same way. You play the same exact chords. Everything's the same. Okay, the only difference is you're plugging an electric guitar into an amplifier, which essentially is like a powered speaker, right? And your pickups or your microphones are going to project the sound through your speaker. So an electric guitar can actually be a little sensitive um, as far as noise goes because the microphones pick up a lot. But other than that, they're actually the same instrument. Any other questions? Anybody else? You got it, John. Thanks for the question, brother. All right, thanks y'all. Thank y'all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, come see me at Take Lessons and y'all have a good evening. Signing off, bye. <laughs>